Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great weekend so far. I'm filming this video on Saturday. It's going up on Sunday, but for some reason I always love filming these videos on the weekend. I feel like they're just a little bit more casual. It's fun to hang out with you guys. I am planning on running some errands later, but honestly, I just kind of wanted to sit down and catch up on all of the new makeup launches. There have been so many new makeup launches already. We're only what, like halfway into January, and I feel like every time I turn around there's a new makeup launch, which does typically happen at the beginning of the year. I feel like we usually see that a little bit more from drugstore brands, but I've also been seeing a ton of high-end launches. So I wasn't really looking at launches over the holiday season, and I just thought it'd be fun to sit down and kind of catch up on everything, both drugstore and high-end, and just chat about them and let you guys know which products caught my eye which ones I'm considering and which ones I'll be skipping over. The first thing I wanted to share is that ColourPop is going to be available at Target, which I feel like we kind of saw coming. They did have like a limited edition holiday collection available at Target. And last time I checked in my Target, there were a few products left. I think they were also available on stores, but it's definitely a partnership that makes sense to me. I love that ColourPop is at Ulta because if you're in store shopping, it's nice to be able to see the products in person, try them out. And Target definitely makes sense because they do carry more affordable brands. So it'll be nice to be able to shop for their products in person. It looks like all of the products will be available on January 29th in stores, but also online, which is really nice because if you're placing a Target order and you want to repurchase one of your go-to products, it's nice to be able to throw that on and just get it with your order instead of placing a separate ColourPop order. But they are including a bunch of their best-selling products like Nine Pan Eyeshadow Palettes, Super Shock Cheek Products, brows, mascara, a ton of lip products, a bunch of complexion products. I mean, based on this list, I feel like their display is going to be pretty big. I don't know about you guys, you'll have to let me know, but my Target is a complete disaster. I used to go in there all the time just to check out like drugstore products in person because it's really well lit and typically it was really well stocked. But every time I go in there, like for probably even like the past year, it just looks like someone completely ransacked the beauty section. But I would love to check out the display in person if my Target gets the products, just to see what products they include. But again, it's nice they're available online at Target.com as well. So in other beauty news, Glossier is going to be available at Sephora on January 17th. I don't think I've ever tried anything from Glossier. I mean, I'm so late to the game at this point. I feel like Glossier had like their really big moment and I hear about them occasionally these days, not quite as much as I did years ago, but now that they're going to be available at Sephora, maybe I need to pick up some of their products. Do you have any Glossier recommendations? I know back in the day, everyone was raving about the boy brow. There were probably a few other products that I just can't think of right now, but I just think it's convenient they're at Sephora. Maybe it will kind of boost the brand again. Again, I just don't know much about them these days. So if you have any products you love, I would love to know. One more thing before we get into the actual products, I saw Cover FX is coming back. I totally thought they went out of business. I remember when they were kind of leaving Ulta, although are they still available there? I I feel like the products were on sale on Ulta's website for a really long time. They're not at Ulta anymore, but they posted on Instagram they're going to be fully restocked in late spring of 2023. So I wonder if we'll see some new products from them. I loved their blush and highlighter duos so, so much for years and years. I still have a few of them, but I haven't used them in a really long time. But if you're missing out on some of your favorite Cover FX products, it looks like they'll be back in stock over the next few months. Okay, so let's start with this launch. I completely missed this one. I think it launched like very beginning of January, but I was out of town at the time, and honestly, I didn't even see that the products launched until I started seeing reviews pop up in my subscription box. I haven't watched any of them because I, I just kind of knew that I was going to skip over the collection, but this is from Natasha Denona. It is the mini pastel palette and then a highlighter. I think the mini pastel palette is really pretty. I love the colors but I have to cut down on eyeshadow palettes in 2023. Honestly, I'm not planning on buying a ton of them. I kind of have like this unofficial number in mind of like three high-end palettes, just because I'm thinking Natasha Denona will probably launch one I wanna try. There might be a Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 coming, and then that leaves room for like one more. I didn't put a limit on drugstore palettes, just because if a drugstore brand is launching a new formula, usually I'll want to try it out and review it on YouTube. Instagram, TikTok, but I'm thinking like probably no more than three high-end palettes. And this one, as pretty as it is, just doesn't feel like a must-have palette for me because I don't know how often I would wear these shades. I mean, I definitely have shades similar to these in my collection. And usually when I buy 
a Natasha Denona mini palette. I'm actually wearing one today. I'm wearing mini nude with a couple of shades from a new CoverGirl palette. I just kind of combined them. But usually when I purchase a mini Natasha Denona palette, it's because I love it as like a travel palette just to throw in my makeup bag. They're super small, really convenient. I feel like you can create a couple of different looks and that's probably not what I would really use this for. It is pretty, but I'm just going to skip over it. The highlighter is gorgeous. I feel like I like the highlighter more than the eyeshadow palette, honestly. It's described as a translucent alabaster base with a wash of shimmering pink, golden champagne, and icy mint, which you can kind of see in the picture. There are certain parts of the pan that are different shades. So I don't know exactly how this would look on the skin. It's a gel powder formula, which sounds really nice, but I will say, based on the swatch in this photo, it kind of looks just like a champagne gold highlighter, which that is the shade that I typically go for. So part of me would love to try it, but part of me is like, do you really need like another highlighter? Honestly, I don't have a ton of highlighters. I was going through my makeup collection. My highlighter bronzer section is probably like the smallest part of my collection. That being said, I tend to wear the same shades over and over and powder highlighter lasts forever. It's not something that I go through very often. I've only hit pan on like maybe one or two of them. I feel like 2023 is going to be the year of highlighter. Charlotte Tilbury, Rare Beauty, Natasha Denona, they've all launched highlighters so far. And I don't know, 2023 is kind of reminding me of like 2016 already. Just based Based on some makeup trend predictions and makeup launches we've seen so far, I feel like 2016 is coming back. So I don't know exactly what that means for all makeup categories, but I do think highlighter is going to have a big moment this year and we're going to see it quite a bit. So speaking of highlighter, Charlotte Tilbury also launched a new highlighter formula. This one comes in six different shades. It retails for $48. There are gorgeous colors and you know, I do like powder highlighter honestly, but I think I, I probably am set when it comes to powder highlighter because I've noticed that like over the past few years, whenever I try a new formula, it doesn't typically replace my favorite, which is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors. I love Champagne Pop, I love Opal. Those really are my two go-tos and they have been for years. So I think if I tried Rare Beauty or Charlotte Tilbury, I might like it, but I don't know that I would like it more than Becca's highlighter. I'm planning on skipping over these. Charlotte Tilbury is also launching new blushes, but liquid matte blushes which is kind of interesting. I feel like Rare Beauty is kind of like the go-to for liquid blush these days, and their liquid blushes are so good. I've actually been wearing them a ton because I did get a set during the holiday season, and I just kind of fell back in love with the formula. I tried it back in 2022, and then I had a shade that I would wear, but after getting that holiday set, I just, I love them so much because now I have different options. You can mix them together. Anyway, these are the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wands from Charlotte Tilbury. It looks like there are three shades in this photo. I'll probably stick with the ones I have for now, but I know people are diehard Charlotte Tilbury fans. So if that is you and you prefer a matte blush, then these might be really appealing to you. They didn't release a date yet. I did buy the new Makeup by Mario foundation. Again, I think this launched like right around Christmas, maybe right around New Year's. I can't remember the last few weeks have just blurred together. I didn't buy it right away. Like I didn't go on Sephora's website and buy it the second it launched because first of all, I knew I wouldn't be able to get like a first impressions up very quickly because we were out of town. Second of all, I really wanted to make like a thoughtful purchase because when it comes to decisions or when it comes to foundations, sometimes I make the decisions way too quickly. Like if it's a really exciting hyped up launch, I buy it before I even consider if it would work well for my skin type or my preferences. Last year I bought the Kosas foundation and that just wasn't great on my oily skin, but my skin type is a lot different this year. It's not quite as oily. It's definitely more combo, but honestly, it's just very balanced these days. So it's not extremely oily or extremely dry, which has been so nice. I'm sure it won't last forever. I'm sure when spring rolls back around, it will be more oily, but I've been taking full advantage of that and just trying all of the glowy products. So I've worn it twice. I didn't film a first impressions on it because I don't know, I kind of wanted to really just test it off camera, like a couple of different ways before sharing my thoughts on it. So anyway, the first time I wore it, it looked really bad on me. It looked good initially, but it didn't wear well because I was using it on top of the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer, which is so weird to me because that really is my go-to primer, which usually wears really nicely under foundation. But after like two hours, you could see all my pores, especially around my chin, which is so weird because that never happens with foundation. Anyway, the second time I wore it, I used a smoothing primer and it looked so good all day long. So it just goes to show like sometimes first impressions are kind of tricky because 
it depends like which primer you use, which setting powder you use, even which concealer you use or what the weather is like or your skin is like that day. So I do feel like it's a little bit more of a like particular foundation just based on the two times I've tried it. But I want to try it out a few more times before I share my final thoughts. But I do like that you can sheer it out and get more of a light coverage look. It has a gorgeous glowy finish. I set mine in a place with powder, which kind of takes away from that glowy finish. But, you know, the second time I used it, it looked really good. So I'll share my final thoughts soon within like the next week or two. But I would love to know what you guys think if you tried it out. Okay, this is a new drugstore launch I am planning on grabbing. I'm actually going to go to CVS today and see if I can find it in stores because I've been wanting to go to the actual drugstore and just kind of browse the aisles and see what's available. Flower Beauty just launched their low light liquid contour and someone said they spotted it at CVS. It is on Ulta's website, but I think some of the shades are already sold out. So once it's restocked, I am planning on trying it or maybe I can find it in person. I love the Flower Beauty highlighter in this packaging. It was like my top highlighter product of 2022. I really want them to launch like glowy blushes in this packaging to replace the Charlotte Tilbury glow or what are they called beauty light wands and like pink gasm there's also peach gasm so if they did a dupe for that that would be amazing but they did do contour shades so I do want to try it out I haven't tried the Charlotte Shelbury contour but I feel like a lot of brands are going to end up duping those because Tarte also launched something similar this is the sculpt tape it's $35 this one comes in five shades and honestly it's time that brands start giving Charlotte Tilbury a run for their money when it comes to a product like this because Charlotte Tilbury is overpriced. I understand that some of their products are maybe worth the price, worth the hype. I've tried some products I enjoy, but if brands can do it for a less expensive price point and do it better and have more shades, like Tarte has five shades, Flower Beauty has three. I'm pretty sure Charlotte Tilbury only comes in two. So again, I'm not opposed to other brands doing something similar and I feel like we're going to see even more dupes for like the glow wands and the contour wands by the end of 2023. So I won't run out and buy the Tarte one because I'll probably just stick with Flower Beauty if I can get it for a less expensive price point. And I'm not even sure that I love a liquid contour because I haven't really tried one. So we'll see. I want to try Flower Beauty first, but if you love Tarte or, you know, one of these shades look like they would be better for you than Charlotte Tilbury, this is available now on Ulta's website. I do have my eye on Tarte in 2023. I tried some of their products in 2022 and I really enjoyed them. I feel like Tarte is making a comeback. They're launching like very trendy products that are really like approachable for day-to-day -day makeup. But Again, that's kind of why I feel like it's 2016. Like it just feels like everything from 2016 is coming back. Tarte used to have like a major, just like this grip on the beauty space. And a lot of people loved Tarte back in the day. And then I feel like people weren't as interested in them. And now they're kind of making a little bit of a comeback. So they did launch a new liquid lip and cheek product. It's $32. $32 sounds expensive. Like that didn't necessarily strike me as super expensive for a liquid contour. Maybe because I was kind of comparing it to Charlotte Tilbury in my mind and it was less expensive than Charlotte Tilbury. But that does seem high for a liquid lip and cheek. Maybe the packaging is throwing me off because it kind of looks like a lip oil. It's supposed to be silky, buildable, blendable. Oh wait, do you get a sponge with it? I think you get a sponge with it. Even still, that seems kind of high. So I do like liquid blush these days. Right now I'm kind of on a rare beauty liquid blush kick like I mentioned. So I don't think I'm going to run out and pick these up, but I'm still curious to see what they launched this year. Oh wait, one more Tarte launch. I didn't even realize this was Tarte at first. It's the Tarte Cravings eyeshadow palette. It's so cute. It looks like a box of chocolates. You get nine neutral shades. It's $32. It's kind of giving like elevated Too Faced chocolate bar vibes, but I like it better. I did try the Tarte Maneater After Dark palette this year or this past year and it was so nice. And I don't know, I feel like this is super cute. It's not something I need in my life because I do have, you know, a good amount of eyeshadow palettes, but I think it's fun. This super up close shot of the palette, I'll put it on the screen, makes the textures look really nice too. I feel like this would be a fun gift. So again, I'm curious to see what they launched this year, but I don't plan on picking that up. Let's talk about a few drugstore launches. I did do a video testing out some new drugstore makeup. I'll link it below if you want to check it out. I'm going to do a part two because there were a few products I didn't include in that video. And then I'll probably do like a big drugstore roundup on all of the drugstore products and let you know it's worth the money, what isn't. 
but the drugstore is off to a really good start so far this year. So a few new NYX launches. I did buy this one. I didn't include it in a video testing it yet. It's the Bear With Me Blur Skin Tint. The description just sounded really nice. I have worn it once. I want to wear it again a few times before I share a full review. And I feel like sometimes I like to do like first impressions, but for some reason when it comes to foundations. I'm not sold on doing first impressions because I just feel like my first impressions are not always accurate when it comes to foundation. Some products you know, like if you try a lip gloss on on camera or even a blush, you just kind of know how it performs. But foundation, there's just too much room for, there are too many variables. Like it could depend on your primer or your powder or what you're doing that day or if you're just sitting at home. So anyway, I want to keep testing this one out, but I would say it, it feels a lot different on the skin than I thought it would based on the description. They say it's a hydrating, medium, buildable coverage tint foundation. It's supposed to blur your skin. It's supposed to leave it looking smooth and then control shine all day. 16 hour wear, transfer and fade resistant. When I initially swatched the product and when I initially applied it to my face, I was like, wow, this has a ton of coverage. It definitely has like a smooth blur and it felt really hydrating. But once it dries down, it's almost like the opposite and it dries with a true matte finish. It's definitely long wearing, it stays in place well. If you have dry skin, I don't think you're going to like this product unless you really prep your skin well. But as someone who has like combo, more like normal skin these days, I feel like it did look a little dry on me, but I feel like it will be so ideal during the spring and the summer when the weather is warmer and my skin's a little more oily. Anyway, I'll use it in an upcoming video, but if you do have dry skin, I would say maybe hold off or really read the reviews before you buy it. They also launched new shades of their brow glue, which is a flake resistant formula. It's supposed to hold your brows in place for 16 hours. I tried this last year and I didn't really like the formula. I think maybe it's a little bit too intense for me. If you're someone who has like very hard to tame brows or you have very thick brow hairs, you might like this one. But I, for me, I usually prefer something a little bit softer and I do like more of like a fiber brow gel, like the NYX Thick It Thick It. That's what I'm wearing today. That one really is my go-to. So I don't think I'll try the new tinted versions, but if you love this and you would love a tinted option, they are available now. The last NYX product I wanted to mention is something I haven't seen anywhere yet, but NYX is launching a new lip oil. I'm so excited. I love lip oils so much. I love that there are so many affordable options. This is the Fat Oil Lip Drip. Honestly, I don't understand the name. And I don't know if it's something that I'm like just missing, if it's compared to something. They say that your lips are pumped up with fat perks, shine, protection. Oh, maybe it's like... I don't know, is it a plumping lip oil? It says it gives you fat hydration. There's a fat applicator. I don't know, I just think it's kind of a weird name. Okay, wait, this picture has a picture of the applicator and it literally says like fat applicator. So maybe that's why they're going with it. Fat shine, fat hydration, fat production. I don't know, I think the marketing's kind of weird, but I would love to try the formula. NYX makes some of the best lip products out there. I love a good lip oil. I feel like there's always room in my collection for a new affordable lip oil formula. So again, I haven't seen this anywhere. I don't know when they're actually launching it. Maybe they have like another collection coming for 2023, but once that's available, I do plan on picking it up. I've launched a lot of products for 2023 already. I won't go through all of them because I did test some of them out in my new video, and then I picked up other ones that I'll probably test in another video soon, but there is a new e.l.f. collection coming. It looks really cute. I feel like e.l.f. usually does do a limited edition collection at the beginning of the year, Two years ago, they did Mint Melt, which I loved. That was one of my favorites. Actually, before that, they did Jelly Pop, which I also loved. And then last year, they did Cookies and Dreams. So this year, it looks like they have one called Good Vibes. It's inspired by the 70s. Based on this photo, it looks like there are two eyeshadow quads, a set of brushes, a lip balm, a velvet blur primer, which sounds really nice. The only thing about e.l.f. and their limited edition collections I feel like they always have a primer. Like they had the Jelly Pop primer, the Mint Melt primer, the Cookies and Dreams putty primer, and now they have this velvet blurring one, but it's limited edition. So if you fall in love with it, it's not available after a little while. I don't know, I feel like they almost use their limited edition collections to sometimes test to see how products do because they launched like Jelly Pop and Mint Melt. And then after those collections were gone, they launched the Power Grip Primer, which was kind of similar to those. So if they if this Velvet Blurring Primer does well, maybe they'll end up launching it as like an actual part of their permanent collection. A lot of people are saying Elf is becoming like the new dupe brand, like Makeup Revolution, 
which I kind of hate to see, to be honest. I love e.l.f. so much, and I love when they dupe a product really well, like the Halo Glow, but I don't necessarily love when a brand like just exists to be a dupe brand. I almost like accidental dupes, like when you find something you love that's so good that replaces something else in your collection, but not necessarily like heavy-handed dupe after heavy-handed dupe. So I do think it's nice they're launching something that's not just a dupe, but like one of their original releases. I don't know, I guess I'm torn on it because at the same time, I do appreciate when they're able to come out with an alternative that's just as good or even better than the high-end option. And I do like a lot of the products that they've kind of duped or based their releases on. I do like their new mascara, which a lot of people say is a dupe for Benefits mascara, which I haven't tried. So I don't know, I feel like if you're really like sold on the high-end product, you're probably going to buy that anyway. So sometimes it's nice when drugstore brands are releasing an alternative at a more affordable price point because makeup is expensive these days. Like even e.l.f. is launching some more expensive products. About Face launched a new lip product that sounds really nice. It's the Cherry Pick Lip Color Butter. It's $15 and it comes in 14 shades. So it's a super glossy high shine balm that instantly melts into the skin. So it kind of sounds like the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips or the Makeup by Mario Moisture Glows. But this one I think is more pigmented. I was kind of scrolling through the different shades on Ulta's website and they definitely look more intense. Kind of like a lipstick lip gloss hybrid rather than like Maracuja Juicy Lips which is a little bit more like glossy and sheer. This one looks like it has like the actual pigmentation of a lipstick. It's supposed to be deliciously fruity scented and feel really good on the lips. There's a shade called Kiwi Fuzz that looks so pretty. I kind of want to pick it up and try it out. You know what? These might be like the Kaja Heart Melter lipsticks, which I did review those on, did I post them anywhere else? I reviewed them on Flip. I don't know if you guys have Flip. I just ordered additional products from there, so I am planning on posting more reviews. I worked with them back in December, but I had been using the app for like a full year before that because I discovered them last year. But basically you can watch beauty reviews and shop in the app and they have really good perks. Like you can get discounts, really good shipping. This is not sponsored at all, but I do post reviews on Flip and I have more coming. So I reviewed the Kaja Heart Melter lipsticks in there and they're really pretty. They're kind of like glossy lipsticks, but this one sounds even glossier. So I do think I want to try these out, especially that shade Kiwi Fuzz. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention is the new Urban Decay Quickie Concealer. I am going to try this out. They did send it to me in the mail as PR. If they hadn't sent it to me, I would have picked it up because typically, or I guess I should say like historically, Urban Decay complexion products have worked really well for me. It's been a while since I've tried one, but I used to love the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation so much. I was like that foundation's number one fan. Again, back in like 2016, maybe even before that, I loved it. So I don't know if you've been around that long, but that used to be my favorite. I also, I do like their powder foundation. I liked their Naked Skin foundation. The Hydromaniac is nice. I need to break that out because last time I used that, my skin was really oily. I feel like it could be really ideal for winter. So anyway, I was curious about this concealer when it was kind of like sneak peeked mid 2022, but it's available now. It's a full coverage concealer. It gives you a natural skin like finish, which sounds perfect. So I'm curious to try it as a spot concealer, but also an under eye concealer. So I'll try it in an upcoming video, but I think that's everything I wanted to share with you. Let's just take a look to see if anything came out since I started filming. I don't think so. I think I'll end it there just because I'm sure this video is already pretty long, but thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me and just catching up on all of the new makeup launches. If there's anything you want me to review on my channel over the next few weeks, let me know because I'll definitely pick it up and try it out for you. But if you want to see a video of me testing some new drugstore launches, I'll link that video right here. And if you want to see a video on my favorite makeup products from 2022, I'll link that video right here. But I'll see you guys very soon with a new video. Bye.